cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything. And today's video is kind of similar to the last one I did, where it's a functional print and it's regarding kind of behind the scenes stuff that I do in my videos here. So this one has to do with action cameras. This is the GoPro Hero 2 that I bought brand new way back in 2011. And I've been using that to shoot all my time-lapse shots on this channel since I started. Not surprisingly, technology has improved a bit in the last six years. So I was really excited when Gearbest sent me this brand new Firefly 8S action camera. This thing's pretty cool. It's got the same sensor as the GoPro Hero 4, but it's like half the price. And I don't have any brand loyalty, so I'm happy to get a good deal like that. What I really like about this is that there's two versions of this camera. One that has a 170 degree field of view, which is great for action sports and things like that. But I got the 90 degree field of view, which eliminates any distortion that you usually get from these kinds of action cameras and it also gets me a nice closer shot of my 3D prints. The other huge improvement since this GoPro here too is that I actually have a screen on the back so I can compose my shots instead of just blindly pointing them towards my subject and hoping I have a good frame. Out of the box, this Firefly 8S comes with a ton of accessories, pretty much everything you need for action sports, you know, its main purpose. But since I'm doing 3D printing related stuff, there's still some accessories that I could still benefit from. So today I'm going to make my own little specific tool to help me shoot time lapses with my 3D printers. Longtime viewers might remember this case that I designed to hold my GoPro onto my tripod. Luckily, the Firefly does have this threading so that I can attach it to the mounting plate for my tripod. That's already pretty great. I can just mount it on my tripod really easily and that'll work for time lapses on most of my printers. I can just go ahead and adjust it and point it how I need to. The problem arises when I need to shoot a time lapse on a printer like this TAS 6 or the CR10 where the plate itself moves in the Y direction, causing this really jerky movement. The solution is to mount the camera onto the actual plate itself so that the Firefly moves with the plate. So on this TAS 6, I decided to use this kind of metal corner element as a way to attach the camera. So I'm just gonna go ahead and eyeball how I want my camera placement to be and then I'll design a way to hold it in that position. I'll take my calipers and measure all these different parts that my model might attach to, and once I have that, I can kind of start building around it. In this case, rather than figuring everything out on paper, I'm kind of gonna improvise in Fusion 360 and figure it out in the software. So I'm starting out by drawing this little slot that's gonna hold on to the metal plate, and next to that, I'll draw this little U-shape that connects to the sensor part of the build plate, something to hold onto and make sure everything's rigid. After that, I'll model out the part of the tripod mount that I'm going to be attaching my model to, and I'll make it a little bit bigger so I have some tolerance to slide it in, and later I'll subtract that from my model. So right now I'm just gonna kind of move it into place. As I said, I pretty much just eyeballed it, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it that 40 degree angle I think it needs, and I'll lower it to the position that I think works best. Now I can draw on the bottom here, and I'm just gonna use the project command by hitting P, and I'm gonna take all these edges of this part and bring them into my current sketch. Then I can use the offset tool to build these walls around the whole thing, so that'll hold onto the tripod mounting plate. Then I'll draw out this arm that basically connects my two parts together. I'll extrude all that to the same height as the rest of my model, and for the time being, I'm gonna make that a new body so that it doesn't merge all of this stuff together. Before I do that, I want to cut this mounting plate part out of my arm. And after that, I want to open one of these sides so that there's a way to slide the camera in. So I'll just project that one face again and then cut through so that I now have an open slot like so. Now I can go ahead and combine the two parts and then I'll just fill it like crazy. I also built some custom supports for that one little overhang, but overall this part doesn't really need any support material. All right, there we go. That's my first iteration, and I did it pretty haphazardly, so we're gonna have to see if that works. Since my support is a separate body and I wanna save them together, I'll just go up to the top here and right-click on this unnamed section, and then I can save that as an STL altogether. Here's my part printed in ABS, so hopefully it can withstand the temperature of the heated build plate without warping too much. Although, as you can see, it already did warp a little bit, and the overhangs are a little messy, but let's go ahead and see how it works. 
So I'll take some pliers and just pull my support material off. And since that overhang is a little messy, I'll just go ahead and scrape it flat with this X-Acto knife. And I want to be careful, so of course I'll be cutting away from myself. So we'll try to slide this camera into the slot, and it seems that I made it a little bit too tight. So that's my first mistake, but let's test out the rest of the model. So here's the edge that I want to connect it to, and I made another error here because this leveling screw goes through the bottom, so I need a slot here in this section. So for the time being, I just used my bandsaw and cut out a slot there so I could test it out, and that seemed to work. Now we've got a nice sturdy connection here. I'm also going to test out the camera and make sure that I had things positioned correctly. The height seems okay, but I do want it tilted a little bit more to the right, so I'm going to fix that in my second attempt at this arm. Having learnt from my mistakes, I went back into Fusion and I modeled a second version of my rig with a few changes. For one thing, you can see I decided to not use my custom support and just use the computer generated ones. They're a little more difficult to remove, but in this case, it's going to cause a cleaner result on the top wall of that slot. I also modeled in that cutout so that this thing actually slides on correctly. And once again, it's a nice snug fit. And then there's the camera. I increased the tolerance and I also created a little clip on the bottom there so that it snaps into place. So everything fits now and overall it's a pretty good angle. But as you can see, if I'm printing something really large, I have to back the camera away quite a bit to get everything in frame. I guess that's the downside of getting the camera with a narrower field of view. So to deal with this, I'm going to print an extension arm that I can use when I'm printing those larger parts. It's also a great way to test out my current rig. As you can see, it does a pretty good job with this time lapse. Overall, this print came out really well, but there is a bit of a crack right here. Luckily, I can fix that with a 3D pen, no problem. So let's just go ahead and make sure that this works as intended. And sure enough, all the parts snap together. I learned from that first attempt. As you can see, with this angle, I get everything in frame, so that's pretty great. The only problem with an arm this long is that it's kind of springy, so hopefully that doesn't affect the quality of the time lapse too much. I printed a similar rig for my CR10, which slips under the middle right here. With this straight arm, the angle wasn't quite correct, so I decided to try out a quick fix, and I just busted out my heat gun. I can just heat up this one spot until it becomes soft enough that I can bend it into a new shape. It's a pretty quick and fun way to easily fix your parts. With this ABS, you'll notice it gets kind of glossy, and that means it's soft enough to bend into shape. So now I'll connect it one more time, and as you can see, the angle is much better. Although this arm is even springier than the last. It looks pretty flimsy, but the quality of the time lapse was actually still pretty good. Unfortunately, the connection to the printer kind of wiggled itself loose after only a few minutes, so that's definitely something I'm gonna have to work on. Alright guys, that was another pretty fun little design challenge. I think my Taz 6 mount here works pretty well. The CR10 one could use some work. In fact, I think they could both use a little bit of work. I'm realizing that even though the resolution on this camera is high enough that I can kind of zoom in and focus on different parts depending on the size of the print, it still might be helpful to kind of be able to orient the camera in different angles and stuff. So I might design a more engineered solution in the future. But for now, I think this is gonna help me get some really nice, stable, and pretty cool looking shots. So look forward to some more cool time lapses on my TAS 6, eventually my CR10 as well. And yeah, I hope that was another fun video for you guys to follow along with. I know some of you are more interested in the artistic side versus this functional slash engineering side. Let me know in the comments if you guys like these types of videos and if you want to see more of those. Maybe if you have some ideas for ways I can make this work a little better. If for whatever reason you want one of these Firefly cameras, GearBest gave me a coupon code so you can check that out in the description. You can get this thing for close to 100 bucks, which is a pretty great deal for a camera at this high quality. All right, until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. Oh shoot, did I just invent another selfie stick? <laughs>